Hello guys, so in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create a simple map using Google Earth. And this is how our finished product will look like basically once we are done. So what you're seeing here is a simple representation of three jogging tracks which you can see from these three lines and also you can see the locations of the meeting points and some of the key pieces of information that I'm going to share with you that might be helpful for you when you make your own map will be things like how to add place marks so that you can indicate certain locations as points on your map, how to import data from external sources, like for example, if you have an S3 shapefile that you would like to import to Google Earth, how we can do that. And next, how we can digitize things in the map itself using Google Earth. And finally, how to do basic styling of icons as well as text before we can actually go on and publish the map. So if this sounds like something that you might be interested in learning, let's go right ahead into the tutorial. So to get started, first you can open up Google Earth and you can use this search panel to either type in the name of the location of your interest or you can simply zoom into the designated area. Now for this tutorial, the location that I have chosen is a small town located towards the east of the city of Salzburg in Austria. So I'm going to search Salzburg in Austria and from there it will be easy for me to navigate to my location of interest. So I'm going to pan this to the eastern side. And before we proceed with the map, I'm going to go ahead and untick all of these because uh, it makes my map look a bit messy at the moment. And in case if I need any of these, maybe later on on the tutorial, I might consider turning them back on. But for the time being, I'm going to turn all of them off, including this terrain option as well, so that we'll have a completely flat 2D map and this is going to be my area of interest and and now I'm going to mark a few things on this map. Alright, so to get started first we'll see how we can import items. So first I'm going to show you how to import a couple of S3 shape files into our working space. So we can go over here to file and go to import and from here you can see there's quite a wide range of different files that we actually can import. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select S3 shape file over here. And as you can see over here in this folder, I have two S3 shape files. I have one S3 shape file called root A and another file called root B. So these are actually two uh, different routes or two different jogging tracks that I would like to uh, show in my map. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually select both and click open. And now it's asking me, do you want to apply a style template to the features that you ingested? I'm going to say yes. And I'm going to create a new template. So what you can see over here in the box below is basically something similar to an attributes table. So we can see that there is one column called name and under that name we have the name of the root. In this case the name of the root is root A and from here we can specify the name field. So since we do not have multiple fields, the only field that I have is name so I'm going to select that. And next we can select a color. We can either go with a single color or we can go with random colors. And if I go with a single color, it will be easy for us to distinguish uh, between the two different routes. And over here, I'm not going to specify any, any heights. So that's going to be it. I'm going to click OK. And over here, it's prompting us to save our style template. So I'm going to just name this as Jogging Tracks. This is just going to be a style template in case if you import another file and if you would like to use the same template as we uh, as we use for the root, we don't really have to go and specify that again. As long as we have this uh, .kst file saved somewhere, we can directly go ahead and import this. So I'm going to save this. And now it's asking what we need to, what we would like to do with root B. Now since we have already saved a styling template, what we can do is we can simply say yes and use the existing template that we just created and click OK so that that template will get added to root B as well. All right, we, uh, nothing is visible yet now because we haven't uh, ticked any of these yet. So I'm going to go ahead and add the tick marks and still at the first glance, it might not be that visible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click over here, go to properties and go to style color. And first I'm going to increase the width of this line so that it'll be a bit more visible. And from here now we can basically change the color of this to any color for preference. I'm going to go with red for this. And now you can see that the root is quite clear. So I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to apply the same settings but 3.7 but a different color to this uh, root B. Let's go with blue. Alright, so I think now it's quite clear. 
And as the next step, I'm going to show you how to add place marks so that you can mark certain things on the map that might be of uh, interest to you guys. For example, in this case, I'm just going to mark the starting point of route A and route B. So I'm going to first uh, select this my places and after that I can click on this add place mark button and that will create a place mark like this which I can move. So before I click OK over here I'm going to move this to the starting point which happens to be this exact point and I'm going to name this as starting point of root A. And if you wish to change the icon, you can do that as well by clicking over here. And since my root is represented by red color, I'm going to maybe go with sort of a pink balloon like this. And we can adjust the scale as well. Let's say I'm going to set the scale to be 1.5. And after that, click OK. So you can see that under my places now, the starting point place mark got added over here. And similarly, I'm also going to add um, another place mark to highlight the starting point uh, which corresponds to root B. So I'm going to add another place mark by clicking on this button, move it to the correct location, and name this as starting point root B. And of course, I'm going to match the color of this to be, to be somewhat similar to the color of root B, which is the blue color and adjust the scale as well to be 1.5 and click OK. Alright, so we have two things now, starting point root A of starting point root B. And before I wrap up the map, I'm also going to actually digitize one more jogging track. And I'm going to represent that in this map as well. And I don't have that file already prepared as an Astro shape file or file in another format. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to digitize that by myself. And the way we digitize uh, lines when it comes to Google Earth is simply by using this add path button. So I'm going to name this path as root C. And I have to do the digitizing before I close this window. So I'm going to keep this open and leave it somewhere aside like this. And I'm going to click on my starting point like this and this is basically going to be my jogging track number three which is the root C. So that's going to go like this. We're going to conclude this uh, jogging track 3 or the root C somewhere at this point. And by the way guys, when I was doing this, I was navigating through the map using the arrow keys. If you want to navigate up, down, left or right, you can simply use the arrow keys to do that. Alright, after I'm done with that, I'm going to click OK. And we have our root C over here, but uh, since it's not really visible, I'm going to make some adjustments, especially to the thickness to get started and after that I'm going to assign a different color as well. Now for this I think let's go with maybe a bit of a green color. I'm not sure whether it will be visible or not. Yeah, I think I'm going to stick to this green and after that click OK. And over here you can see under my places now we have another root, root called root C. And similar to what we did, I'm going to add another place mark just to indicate the starting point. going to move this right over here starting point of root C change the icon to be green color in case if you cannot find this color uh, from this given template you can always go ahead and change the color from here and I'm going to click OK so we have three place marks now starting points of root A root B and root C and you can actually use your scroll wheel to adjust the tilt and rotation of this map a bit. Well, we can click OK to conclude this. Alright, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to make this text stand out a bit. You can see by default it's uh, it's in white color. So first I'm going to go to root A, right click and go to properties. 
And over here under style color, you can see that the label color by default is white. And I can change that. Let's see what if I were to assign maybe yellow color. I think it might stand out just a bit. Yeah. And from here, I can decrease or increase the font size as well. But I think the font size, I'm going to leave this as it is. Uh, the only the only change that I'm going to do is basically uh, I'm going to change the font color to make it yellow. And guys, keep in mind that uh, this is not really a complex uh, interface like a dedicated GIS software packages where you can do a number of uh, different styling options. We are quite limited by the number of uh, options that's available because obviously the primary intention of Google Earth is not to use the software as a map making tool. And what we are getting over here is basically something like an added bonus that uh, that's built on top of something that was created to do a, a completely different job. But I think it's going to be quite helpful in, in many cases, especially for people who are not really familiar with the complex GA software packages. If, if you want to just, you know, create a very quick map without spending too much time to learn complicated software, then this would be one of the best options that they have out there, which also happens to be completely free. And now what I'm going to show you is how to create our map layout. So in order to do that, I'm going to hide this sidebar so that we can we get a bit more real estate in terms of the screen area. And I'm going to go to file and go to save and I'm going to save this as an image. And as soon as you do that, you can see that your screen get cropped, especially from the sides. And the reason for that is the resolution that you choose. You can go to a current resolution of 1920 by 984 which will give the entire screen area or you can go to maximum resolution of uh, 4800 by 2460 but for this I'm going to select 1920 by 1080 which is the full HD resolution which will crop these two sides of the of my image so that I can center my image properly in the way that I want and over here you can see a couple of things we have a place to input a title and over here we have the legends of these different items that we have over here. And we have a north arrow and a scale bar. And over here we have this Google Earth watermark, which we cannot get rid of because uh, we're using their services to actually generate this map. So this, this watermark will always be there. Well, the only option that you have is to manually adjust where you would like to have this watermark. You can have it be somewhere over here or on the bottom right corner of the screen. But you just cannot get rid of that and that's totally fine with me. I'm just going to leave it over here where it was before. And once you have centered everything properly, what you can do is you can go to view and go to reset. And you can reset the tilt and the compass because sometimes when you're working on the map, your map might get rotated in unwanted ways and it can actually get tilted like this as well. So I'm going to go to view reset and I'm going to reset both tilt and the compass. Now that will actually change a couple of things just a bit. Now over here you can see that the north arrow previously when it was like this you can see that the north arrow was pointing to somewhere over here and those things actually get corrected when you do this uh, tilt and compass correction. So I'm going to perform that tilt and compass correction once more so that you can see it got adjusted properly but I still might have to maybe zoom out just a bit and move the map down just a bit like this yeah and you can you can move these things around you can move the north arrow and place it maybe somewhere over here and we have the scale bar I think I can leave the scale bar over here should be fine and the legend I'm going to maybe put it right over here and we can actually edit the items in the legend. And as you can see, once I click on this refresh from view, you can see that all the additional items that we added actually gets added into the legend itself. So before coming onto this map layout, if you happen to do some changes, it might not get updated instantly under this legend. So you can basically click on this refresh from view button to make sure that all those uh, changes are actually updated when it comes to the legend as well. 
So over here we can represent quite a few things. We can represent the root a, root b and root c and also the starting points of root a, root b and root c. And uh, as I told you guys, uh, if, we, if we were to use a complex GIS software package, we might have quite a number of other options when it comes to editing the things in the legend like adding different styles to the fonts or setting different background colors. And over here you can see that we're actually limited with the functionalities, but that's totally fine as I told you guys. And finally what I'm going to do is, after I center again everything, I'm going to move this uh, title bar over here. And we can adjust the title bar to be somewhat center like this. And I'm going to add a title called Jogging Tracks. And maybe I can adjust this yeah, to be in the center. I can add Map of Jogging Tracks. And once you feel that you're done with everything, you can simply go ahead and click on Save Image. And over here, I'm going to name this as map of jogging tracks you can save the image as a jpeg image and click save and now if you head back to the place where you saved your file and open that up this is how that map of jogging tracks would look quite simple but uh, extremely efficient all right guys so that brings us to the end of this tutorial and we have a series of Google Maps and Google Earth related tutorials coming up in the following weeks, which might be extremely helpful to make your daily life easier if you actually had known that uh, these kinds of possibilities existed uh, in Google Maps and Google Earth. So we'll be presenting all of that to you guys. And, and in addition to that, we have also created beginners tutorials related to Google Earth. If you are completely new to all of this, you can actually have a look at that before we dive into more advanced functionalities. You can click on the link appearing on the top right corner to access that tutorial. All right, guys. So thanks a lot for watching. If you did like the tutorial, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to be notified instantly once we upload a tutorial on this channel, you can consider subscribing as well. So I'll see you guys again with another tutorial very soon.